Hello, welcome along to Argyle TV for another away day for the Greens. This time it's up in Derby for the first time in 13 years. Argyle just pinch one before the break. He goes sprinting forward, lovely little pass to Mumba inside the box. Low ball, shot comes in, oh what a There it is! Finish out! He's strong in the field against Batty. Now there's a chance. It's out. 25 yards from goal. Jamea. Oh, it's a lovely pass. Just free Mumbra on the left hand side. As he brought down, he is. Referee points to the spot as an Argyle penalty. Here he comes. Steps up. Right footed and scores. Maya Edwards. Hardy. Mayer again. Brilliant stuff from Argyle. The triangle. Mayer cuts it back for a finish. Edge of the box. Pieces man goes down. Got to be. Got to be. Penalty. Hardy steps up. Right footed. Scores! Not a bad month, eh? We enter September with Argyle fifth in the table. Four wins already from their six games in Skybet League One. And they'll be hoping for another one today. It's going to be a tough one, though, up against Derby County, who have been pretty formidable on home soil so far this season. 100% record, in fact. So hopefully... The two and a bit thousand Argyle supporters that made the journey up to the Midlands will be able to cheer the boys on to a victory. Well, you can you can hear it all here on Argyle TV. You can watch it all here on Argyle TV, of course. And over the next 40 minutes or so, we will be doing our best to build up to this afternoon's game. We'll be hearing from Stephen Schumacher ahead of it. We'll be having a little chat with Adam Randall as well. And of course, we'll get to meet the new boy, Sam Cosgrove, signed on deadline day does he go straight into the match day squad? Well, to help us with everything throughout the afternoon is Mark Edworthy, who played not only for Argyle, but also for Derby County. And Mark, it's great to have you with us. We said after the Bristol Rovers game in midweek, you're well and truly indoctrinated into the Argyle TV family. Um, but these two of your old clubs... Mouthwatering game, really. It certainly is. Fifth and sixth of each other in the table. Um, as you said, Derby County are unbeaten at home this season. Uh, Plymouth only lost two away games all season, one against Charlton and Fleetwood. So it's going to be a tough afternoon. But Schumacher is going to take a very exciting side up to Pride Park this afternoon. And I really look forward to the game. I can't call it, but we know it's going to be a tough game against Derby, especially with their home record so far. Yeah, we mentioned that the home record, Mark, and you're absolutely right. 100% record in all competitions. They've not conceded many goals. They've got a squad full of stars. We'll look at the team news in just a moment. But, you know, considering it's, a, I think, only their fifth season at this level, it is a big fish in this league, isn't it, Derby? It certainly is. We talked about before, I think, Charlie, the population between the two cities, Derby and Plymouth, and yet they, you know, can almost get 30,000 there at Pride Park. And, Plymouth took fantastic away support this afternoon. Uh, nearly 3,000, I think, we, that was mentioned. Uh, so, wonderful support for both teams. Uh, but Derby, considering they've been in uh, really difficult problems off the field, gone into administration, I think Liam Senior and their recruitment have, have acted superbly in the window. And they've really brought in some talented players, um, some Premier League players as well with vast experience. And also, they've got some really good youth here coming through the academy, as Argo have done. Schumacher's done superbly well with their youth academy as well. 
So it's a mouthwatering tie this afternoon. It really is. Now you mentioned the manager, Liam Rossini. He's in his first job, uh, albeit interim at the moment, but he's he started pretty well. So you imagine that could continue. Stephen Schumacher, similarly, in his first job, both 38 years old. There's kind of similarities there. And it's, it's nice seeing these young managers given a chance and also doing well. Exactly. I think Liam has, has been there now for a number of years. He worked under Koku before and obviously Wayne Rooney. So he was ready to get that opportunity. Uh, interim manager at the moment, but doing a fantastic job. So he's heading towards hopefully a permanent post there. And Schumacher here at Home Park as well. What a great young manager as well, following on from Ryan Lowe. Um, he's picked up a manager of the month on the way as well last season. And he's building. Uh, we've been fantastic here at Home Park. We really have a, uh, unbeaten as well can improve on the road. We know it's been difficult against Charlton, the sending off. I think that was an unfair reflection on the 5-1 defeat, lost narrowly against Fleetwood. But overall, I think he'll be delighted with the start. And as we said, 5th v 6th, this early on in the season, it's a mouth-watering tie. Yeah, it starts off a bit of a, a bundle of matches as well for Argyle coming up against tough teams. As always, we want you to get in touch with us uh, throughout the afternoon you can uh, find us on social media on on twitter at argyle or on facebook with a similar name as well you can also comment on this video that you're watching on our youtube page just comment below and we'll read out the best ones from throughout the afternoon well we'll get to team news in just a moment i know that's a bit everybody wants to get to we'll find out who's playing and who's not uh, but first let's have a listen to stephen schumacher who spoke with me earlier this week they're good um yeah got some really good players We've seen that as soon as they started signing players over the summer when obviously all of the takeover and whatever went through. Um, yeah, good players, good team. Obviously a huge sold out Pride Park. It's going to be a good game and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sure the players are as well. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that, what are we, seven or eight games into the season, we've, we've already played the three sides that have come down from the Championship. I mean, yeah. it's we, we mentioned at the start of the year, it's on paper a tough start, but these are the games you won, aren't they? Yeah, that's been a tough start. It's been really difficult to pick up the points that we've got. We've had to graft in every single game to get them points, and Saturday will be no different. We're going to have to be right at our very best to go and get something from, from Derby. As I said, they've got excellent players. Um, I think they will get stronger as the year goes on, probably similar to what Sheffield Wednesday were um, last season. And yeah, it's going to be a hard game, but we've just got to go there and with no fear. As I've said, we've played a couple of the relegated teams from the championship last season and done well and we've got to go there and give it our best again on Saturday because we feel as though when we're at our best we're, we're a match for anyone and with our travelling fans behind us then we'll have some good energy hopefully as well. Yeah you mentioned the atmosphere I mean we've sold well over 2,000 they get nearly 30 don't they mm -hmm. at home games it's going to be almost like a Premier League sort of game. Isn't it? It's going to be brilliant yeah and these are the type of games as a player that you proper look forward to it's the, like you look at it and I don't know whether many of our players have played at Pride Park yeah, I'm not sure but you know it's one of them that when the fixture list come on I, I see it okay when do we play Derby County and it's here so yeah really looking forward to it excited and uh, we're going to give it our best It's another new manager as well Yeah another one <laughs> like, like we said last week seeing that's all we've got and again it all adds to the to the challenge um, seeing how they play they play some lovely football they've got loads of good movement got good players that complement that that shape and that system but but they're only human and they're in our division as well so we'll go there and give it our best and hopefully we come out on top. You mentioned how kind of well they've started we are just above them in the table so we've started well as well so you know th there is no fear I presume. No I think um, look, we, we wanted to make sure that we had no hangover from last season we all remember how, how that ended but we, we have to remember also that we played really well. We got 80 points mm. in League One, and we just didn't want that to be look, looked at as though it was a fluke because it wasn't. We had to work incredibly hard for that. And starting this season, that was our, our mindset. Well, come on, it wasn't flashing the pan. We need to improve and get better. We feel as though the players we've brought in has helped. We have got a better squad, um, and we're getting stronger as the games go. I don't think our performances have been top, top draw yet. There's still loads to improve on, especially in the new system. But we're doing okay and we've picked up some good points and we want to just try and continue it for as long as possible. Does that is that a, a really good thing in a way? Because we spoke before the, the Bolton game about it, you know, potentially being a really tight one and after the game, you know, it might not have been the absolute max performance, but clinical scored two goals. Is it exciting that there is still 
you know there is still more to come from the side. Definitely, yeah. There's loads of improvement to do. As I say, we've done, we've done well in a load of the games in certain aspects, or for spells, and that's just how the season always pans out. Throughout it, probably you don't get play the same every single game, 46 games. So, yeah, sat last Saturday against Bolton, we wasn't great with the ball, but we were very good defensively. We come out on top in the majority of the duels. We didn't give them too many clear-cut opportunities. It was a tight game. And as I said, we were clinical. And I think the top end of the table in League One games, they're almost like championship games. There's championship clubs in the division. There's Premier League clubs, ex-Premier League clubs in the division. So the games are always tight. And it's the teams who look after both boxes and score when you get your chances and be clinical that that will come out on top and do the best. Stephen Schumacher there speaking to me earlier this week, actually on deadline day. Um, so he took a little bit of time out to do it. I think he was quite happy to be whisked away so he didn't have to be by the phone for the rest of that day but interesting what he says about today's opponents and, and Liam Rossini and the way that they play and he's he's opted for a pretty strong lineup this afternoon let's have a look at the side that he has picked three changes from the side that beat uh, that beat Bolton at home park a week ago uh, Adam Randall comes back in to the middle of midfield, replacing Jordan Houghton, who drops to the bench. Interesting ones up front. Ryan Hardy returning to lead the line with Morgan Whitaker coming in for Finn Azaz. Mark That's Udworthy, looking, looking at that, that one, Mark. Um, I suppose that the headline really is Whitaker coming in to face his old team. Yeah, we're here midweek against Bristol Rovers, and I thought Hardy and Whitaker combined really well, created some good chances. And got him behind the defence and perhaps Chewy's looked at that and thought, you know, there's a combination there. Um, we got some real flair, um, Balimamba as well, who can come off the wing as well to to really come in, be forceful away from him. I, I don't think they're going to really um, sit back too much there unless they sit back and counter-attack. be interesting to see what his tactics are. But Whitaker going back to his former club, he wanted to do something well there as well. So it'll be very interesting to see how those two play together this afternoon. Yeah, and, and I, the manager has spoken about the impact that Whitaker has made from the bench. And I know he started against Charlton and scored. But as you mentioned, he came on, I think, in the, in the league game against Bolton and set up Hardy's goal. He nearly got another chance. He linked up well with Hardy again. Are we are we beginning to see now the the real Morgan Whitaker, I suppose, in, in an Argyle shirt? You're probably someone you've known since since quite a young age when you were at, at Derby. Yeah, we talked about it before, under, under 18 level and under 20 level, and, and very quick, dynamic, uh, always moving from left to right, very good on the eye. Uh, I think he wants to prove a point on loan from Swansea. Uh, and he did in midweek, he looked very sharp. And as we said, I th thought he linked really well with Hardy. Uh, he can score goals. I think when we last played um, against Swansea, I think he scored a hat-trick against Argo. So... Um, we know he's a goal scorer and I'm sure he want to go back to Pride Park this afternoon. And really, I think he'll get a good reception. I think the fans are very warming and welcoming from former players. And he's a young player as well. He's a young man. Uh, but he will want to go there and do well this afternoon, obviously, in an Argyle shirt. The, the other um, interesting name on, the, on that team sheet is on the bench. And it's Sam Cosgrove, signed on deadline day. Uh, six foot four inch striker. Um a little bit something different. Uh, he doesn't get the start, but what do you think he can bring to this so, Argyle side, Mark? Yeah, I was just looking at some stats before. I mean, six foot four, you know, he's, he's a giant really as a striker. Um, I don't think he's an out and out target man. Obviously, he had a fantastic um, run of games at Aberdeen. That's where he's probably had his best spell, scored a number of goals. And you're right, he's just something different from set plays for and against. It obviously, with that height, can, can be extremely helpful. Um, because ultimately that's where a lot of games are won and lost uh, on set play situation. So I'll be really keen to see him play. As we said, he can score goals because he made a name for himself at Aberdeen. Well, let's have a little look at the Derby side now as well, shall we? Um, Argyle making three changes. Derby also making three changes from the side that beat Peterborough late on last weekend. See the face there, Connor Harahan. Uh, middle of midfield, new signing this season, former Argyle player, of course. But those changes, interesting. It looks like it might be a change of formation, potentially. Louis Sibley dropping out, David McGoldrick coming in. Um, another summer signing, Mendes Lang also on the right-hand side and Forsyth coming in for Roberts at the back. Um, obviously, we don't know what the formation is going to be, Mark, but, but looking at it, we, we spoke about their uh, recruitment in the summer and, and some of the names in that squad are, are, are daunting. But then again, they are beatable. 
Well, considering they went into administration and the amount of players they got into the football club, the recruitment has done a fantastic job. And they've brought some real experience and they've got some a blend of youth as well. For Saif, I know very well when I was at Derby, um, he's, he's a real uh, mature player back there, very organised, can operate obviously at left back or in centre-half position. Uh, Mendes Lang is an exciting one to watch. Stearman, again, vast experience. And then the likes of uh, McGoldrick as well. We know he's a, he's a goal scorer. He did superbly well at Sheffield United. And obviously James Collins as well. So, you know, they're 33, 34 years of age. Real experienced campaigners there. And Jason Knight, uh, not forgetting some of the youngsters and Max Bird. There's a real mixed blend, uh, mix blend of quality regarding youth and experience. So it'll be interesting to see how they line up and what they can offer. Yeah, he rightly mentioned a lot of that experience. Um, Forsyth, Harahan, McGoldrick, Mendes Lang, Stearman, Collins, as you say, all over 30, all got hundreds of Football League, even Premier League international matches behind them. But that you also mentioned the younger players and Derby in recent years have been able to bring through a lot. Max Bird is one of them, captain of the side as well. What, what sort of player is he? Yeah, Max Bird, superb player. I think he really had come to the forefront under Frank Lampard. Uh, he sort of sits in midfield, very comfortable on the ball, uh, can create things, soak up pressure, and he's got a real killer pass as well. Can score goals, he's added goals to his game. Uh, Lewis Sibley, a surprise he's not starting, he's another starlet that's come through. Again, really sort of aggressive, a uh, bit different to Max Bird, uh, can drive forward and score goals. And Jason Knight's been one one who's been talked about uh, over a number of years at Derby as well. Operates in the fullback position today, but... Jason can play anyway. He's that talented player. You can play him in midfield. You can play him up front. You can play him in goal and he'll give you seven or eight out of ten. They think right very highly of those young lads. And um, yeah, they've got fantastic futures ahead of them. We'll have a, a little chat about what, how the game's going to go and how you see it, Mark, in just a moment. But a reminder that we want you to get in touch with us at Argyle on, on Twitter or on Facebook. Leave a comment on what you think of uh, the side that's been picked by Stephen Schumacher today. You can also get in touch by dropping a comment on the... Uh, on the YouTube video below, a couple of people quickly getting in touch. Jack saying Ennis dropped, surprising, but Hardy has scored goals so far this season. Liam goes, no surprise to see Whitaker and Hardy brought in. Decent pace on the counter-attack in a game where we're likely to have little possession. Decent options on the bench as well. And I suppose, Mark, that's actually quite a good point there um, that that uh, was brought up. Who was it who said it again? Uh, Liam, who, you know, pace in the side with Hardy and 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 Whitaker, and we've mentioned the, the kind of experience and you're looking at that back line and Richard Stearman's back there. Is that something that maybe Stephen Schumacher will be, be looking at, at kind of implementing? And that's why he's gone with the, those two players? Yeah, potentially, but let's not take anything away from Narwanis. He scored here uh, against Bolton and he's got great pace as well. He gets in behind. He's really aggressive. He rolls defenders and, and he scored a great go at the weekend. So he'll be surprised he's been left out. And don't forget the lads in midweek have played against Bristol Rovers. Hardy and Morgan Whitty have both played games. So uh, are they going to look at the legs? Are they going to get tired? Or are they going to start and then bring the likes of uh, Ennis on? So uh, it was a brave decision by Schumacher. Uh, he's obviously looked at training all week. But I think just something in midweek between Whitaker and Hardy, that combination, they linked superbly well and created a number of chances, got in behind Bristol Rovers on, on numerous occasions. And perhaps he's thinking that just might be a, uh, a sign of something for today. And I suppose sometimes playing players that work well together, together in a game, like, you know, partnerships. Yeah, you find new partnerships and, and sometimes they're, they're unexpected finds as well. But we know Hardy, he's got great pace. He runs behind. He loves to stretch defenders. As you said about an ageing back back line for, for Derby. No Stearman's there. No Curtis Davis. Unfortunately, he's missing at the moment, but he's got vast experience. So are they going to try to go in behind the Derby defence and create opportunities. We know Whitaker and Hardy have got pace to burn. Just on Derby as well, we mentioned their incredible home records this season. They've won every game. Looking back to last season as well, and we know how well Wayne Rooney did with that side and, and bringing youngsters through. And actually, if it wasn't for the points deduction, they'd have been absolutely fine last year. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have been relegated. I think they only lost five games in the league at Pride Park last season. Um, what, what is it? I mean, obviously they get so many supporters there that obviously helps them helps them on. But but what is it about playing there? Do you think for, for Derby? Well, I think it's uh, one. It's the supporters for sure. You know, we talked about getting twenty plus thirty thousand into into Pride Park. It, it's incredible, really. And and the same is it could be we got to make 
home park a fortress as well. If you start winning your home games, it's tradition, isn't it? And you get something on the road, you're going to be there, thereabouts. And I think Derby, uh, it's a tough place to go as well to get a result. But also you look at the other side that it's probably no disrespect to the other teams in the league. It's probably one of their best away games of the season, just purely because the number of fans that do turn up. So great support for both clubs. And I think if we make home park a fortress as well, but get something on the road, it's going to be a tough game today at Pride Park. But if we do get something on the road, then that keeps you in that sort of top six or even still, if we can push our neck out, get automatic promotion. I like the use of we when talking about Argyle there, Mark. It's good. <laughs> now, I know, I've been asked this question so many times. It's a real difficult one. I've got a real passion for, for Derby, but I'm now down in the southwest, and and uh, obviously this is where it all started for me, as we said, at Plymouth. So, yeah, I, I can't tell you what shirt I've got underneath here, but um, <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll reveal it after. But, no, you just want a fantastic game for the supporters, and I think whoever performs on the day will be worthy winners, but I, I'm really hoping Plymouth can go up there and get a good result today as well. Yeah, let's just look at a couple of comments that have come in as well. Um, thanks for for getting them in. Remember, you can you can keep them coming in Twitter at Argyle. You can um, put messages on the bottom of this YouTube video as well. And Ian has has put in a message to say, "Set there in the same league as us. Just don't freeze and let the occasion affect the players. Put on a show." Massive month of games coming up for Argyle. Anton Anton says, "Gutted not to be at Pride Park today, but watching along here from sunny Tenerife. God, wish I could be in sunny Tenerife." Sunny Tenerife. I know. <laughs> a bit cloudy and overcast here, but um, nice to see you watching, Anton. Um, and I suppose the point that both of them have, have, have made, Mark, you know, it, it, it just don't freeze. Don't let the occasion of playing at Pride Park in front of 30,000 get the better of you. Well, I think last season was a great help. Chelsea in the Cup. We went to Stamford Bridge and put on an absolutely fantastic performance. And if there was any pressure, it's playing against Premier League opposition. So I think they've they've learned that over the course of the campaign. Uh, they'll be really excited about going to to Derby this afternoon. And I think they fancy their chances. They'll go there and put on a performance. And no doubt Schumacher believes they can go and get a result there. They start off with a point. If they come away from the point, I believe it's a fantastic result this afternoon. But who knows? It might be Plymouth Day and get all three. More chat to come in the next uh, 40 minute or half an hour or so. And of course, commentary to come as well. Of the whole game up at Pride Park, Argyle's trip to Derby. Um, you can hear it all on Argyle TV or watch it if you are like Anton and are in sunny Tenerife living overseas. Um, time now, though, to have a chat with Adam Randall. He has made a terrific start to the season. He's closing on 50 appearances for Argyle as well. Back in the starting lineup today. But how's he been enjoying? I mean, I think everyone can see that it's been quite a good start, I think. Uh, I think we're in a good place. Had some good results. So, yeah, we started strong, I think. Now, we, we spoke earlier on in the year, and it was it was just after the first game of the season, and the whole thing was about getting a bit of momentum going. And, and the last few games, we seem to have done that. Yeah, definitely. Can you, can you feel that as well? Yeah, I mean, the first couple were obviously a bit sort of up and down um, in terms of results and performances. But, no, we seem to have... To have struck a bit of slight bit of form, obviously the start of hopefully something something good. Yeah, and it always is quite decent. It's, you know, it's good to get off to a, a decent start, isn't it? Because you're not then having to play catch up necessarily later on. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, it's obviously important to to start strong and aim to continue that. So, from a personal note, as well, you've played a lot of games. How yeah. have you felt you've done? Um, overall, I've been been happy with with my personal starts this season. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what I said before, I want to I want to be starting um, as many games as possible. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just pleased, and hopefully for me as well, it can continue. Take us into that engine room in midfield, because you know there's there's been rotation. You're all in and out and complementing each other well. <laughs> How is all of that working? Um, just sort of, I guess, you just take it day by day. You sort of, we we all know each other well. We all play play well with each other. Um, Especially me, Jordan Butch, we can all all play alongside each other. It's not a specific um, change if you if you play with a certain person. It's just you, you play with who you're next to, and, and it works well. So, the, so there isn't there isn't a check. So, say if you're playing with Jordan, he you wouldn't you wouldn't change your game if you're playing with him rather than not drastically. No, no. Obviously, you, you know people's strengths and people's weaknesses, maybe, um, but. No, the majority of it's it's all the same. You just you play your game, and all three of us, I think, our games complement each other. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's it's positive whoever you play with. It doesn't matter. 
for something like that. We mentioned a good start and we, we want to try and continue it. It's a tough month coming up and it starts on Saturday with, with Derby. It'll be the third of the relegated sides that we've played already and only seven games in. Mm. Uh, how much are you looking forward to that sort of challenge? Um, it's another big test, obviously. Um, like you say, we've got a bit of a tough run of games on paper coming up. So, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the, to the challenge, I guess, and, and give it our everything and hopefully come out of it with a few, few good results. And on Saturday, it could be Adam Randall up against Conor Harahan, ex-Argyle central midfielder as well. Do you remember him when he was here as a player? Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, he's, he's sort of one that I grew up watching here, yeah, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting to try and get one over on him. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't show him onto his left foot, mate. Exactly. That's all I can say. Um, <laughs> but, it, you know, it's a test against a side that came down. They've, they've, they've changed their squad a lot. They've had a decent start. Big stadium. I mean, this surely is what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, really looking forward to it, obviously. I'm sure everyone is. Um, like you say, playing on a, on a big stadium, a big stadium will be, uh, will be nice. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. And if we, if we can get... You know, a decent result in that, and continue continue this run. That well, it just ca it sets it up really nicely, doesn't it? For, yeah, for absolutely. If we, if we come away with that with with a win, then we're we're in a really good place. We already are, but yeah, hopefully it'll continue. You're watching Argyle TV. It's just coming up to half past two on match day. Argyle up in Derby, taking on Derby County, uh, up at Pro Park for the first time in almost 13 years, looking to continue their fine run of form at the start of this season. Uh, and in doing so, they'll have to get past the Derby side who, well, they're pretty formidable at home as well. We'll head across to Pride Park very, very shortly. But first, let's hear from the new boys, shall we? Sam Cosgrove signed on Derby Day, uh, deadline day, sorry, from Birmingham City. Uh, and he is in the squad today on the bench. And this is what he's all about. Uh, Sam, welcome to Argyle. Um, early on deadline day. It's always exciting to do on, on deadline day. But how, how do you feel? Yeah, exactly. Just a bit of relief, but excitement at the same time. Um, as you said, luckily it's happened early enough, so there's not too much panic at the, at the end of the day. But yeah, absolutely delighted to be here. Why Argo? What was it about the club? You know, a, it was a complicated situation with Birmingham, but as soon as um, the gaffer and, and everyone at the club came in and I knew there was that, that interest, it was something that piqued me, you know, straight away. Um, and it's, you know, I was lucky enough to play in the league last year and I played against against Argyle twice and it was they're an impressive outfit to say the least so when the opportunity came up to, to potentially come here I knew it would be a great chance for me. Yeah we saw you twice for two different clubs yeah. obviously, didn't we? Shrewsbury and, and AFC Wimbledon mm -hmm. what did you kind of think about us when you were playing against us? Yeah I mean you know Argyle aren't a club that I've come across too much being a northern lad it's kind of the opposite <laughs> end of the country to me um, but both times I played against, it was I was mightily impressed. You know, it was kind of a shock to the system, and obviously that was echoed by how good of a season you had last year. Um, just missing out on the playoffs, and you know there were some big teams in the in, in the league last year, and I think that the, the team like, I really deserved the place in there. They were just unfortunate to fall at the last hurdle. What What are your hopes this year? How do you see yourself <laughs> fitting in and, and integrating in the team? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've spoken to the gaffer and he knows what he wants from me. You know, it's it's no surprise being six foot five that I'm probably classed as more of a target man. So hopefully I can I can complement the team in my ways, but also I can adapt to, to the style of the team, which I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out what it is. Yeah, you mentioned your height there. You mentioned the word target man. Is, is that how you see yourself? Is that the style of player that you are? How, how would you describe yourself to our fans? Yeah, I think so. Maybe more of a modern day number nine you know I, th I think I don't think footballers can really get away with just being a, a lump up top that's not mobile so 
I work hard, I can run around, um, and I've got a few different sides to my game as well, but for sure the, the physical side of being a, a traditional number nine is my, is my game. Let, let's kind of dive back into your kind of footballing history. So talk us about where it all started, early career. I started um, up at Everton as a, as a young lad and then uh, moved to Wigan where I had my, uh, did my scholarship and my apprenticeship. Um, I then did a small stint at Carlisle before going up to Scotland, which is probably where I had my success, most successful period. Um, really enjoyed my time up there. The manager, the staff and the club were absolutely fantastic with me. But when the opportunity arose to come back down to England and a bit close to home and to play football in the Championship with Birmingham, it was something that I couldn't, I couldn't turn down. So, um, and then I find myself here now. Yeah, the, the time in Scotland, just, just a quick one on that. I mean, that must have been an incredible experience. You said, as you said, you, you, know, you scored a lot of goals, played against some of the best teams in, in, in Europe, really, in Celtic and Rangers, yeah. played in the Europa League. You know, what a few years that must have been. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think Scotland does get a bad rap down here for some reason. You know, I think that there's, there's the two sides to Scotland. There's, there is the the smaller clubs that are in the league and, and then you've got the likes of Celtics, Rangers so the disparity is quite big and I suppose I can see where it comes from but you know some of the experiences that I gained as you said playing in Europe, playing at Ibrox, Celtic Park in front of 60 plus thousand people mm. the, the football and memories that I'll take with me um, then they'll definitely be a, a good part of my career. And you also started life at Everton, like quite a few here at, Ar yeah. at Argyle as well. Have you come across any of the, the guys here before, Neil Jusnip? Yeah, no, no. so I worked with Neil when I, when I was younger. Obviously, I was still in, a, in high school. I was still a young, a young lad, and I think Neil was, was heading up the academy there. He was, he was quite, quite a senior figure. Um, so I know Neil, and I spoke to Neil before I came here, and he was, he was extremely complimentary of the club, of myself, and that was... That was definitely a reason to come in. Just finally, we've got a game coming up in a couple of days' time. Um, if you're involved, how, how excited are you to get going? Really excited. You know, I think, as opposed to last year, it's, it's a chance to be fighting at the top end of the table. So, you know, I know how good the boys were last year. I can see how, how well they've started this year. So hopefully I can add to that and be, be a part of a, a successful side for this year. Sam Cosgrove, who was signed on deadline day on a season-long loan from Birmingham City. And, uh, well, interesting speaking to him as well, Mark, because he he was saying that, you know, obviously six foot four, big lad, target man, people will think. But, you know, he, he feels he has more to offer than just being someone to hit. Yeah, he certainly has. I think he speaks superbly well there. Uh, as we said, he can be good in both box, attacking and defensive-wise with that height. But he's just not someone who is the ball to be bombarded up front. He can he just hold it up. He's got more to his game. Had his best bow up in Scotland at Aberdeen. I think he scored over 30 goals up there on loan from Birmingham. So that just goes to show that John Eustace uh, has a good relationship with, with Shuey. And I think that's a good thing about it. You've got a number of loan players here now. We've got, obviously, Finazaz from Aston Villa, Bally Mamba from Norwich. You know, Premier League players and Championship players coming here at Home Park. Um with, they're building something good here and it's an opportunity for them to come and play some work hopefully if they do work and I think this is um, one that's coming late and I think he's just something different as we talked about and uh, hopefully he's got something to offer yeah it's also quite encouraging I think when you hear a player say that you know we, I, I played against you last season and think that I can actually really flourish in this team which is is, is what he was saying yeah he, he spoke in there and just said you know, he, he knew Plymouth was a, a good place. He liked the way we performed, the way we create chances. We we're hard to play against. So hopefully he thinks with his personality and his talent, he can fit, fit in nicely here. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing him, hopefully, if he gets on today, what he can offer. Yeah, on the bench today, Sam Cosgrove. We'll run through the team in just a moment for you again because uh, we're, we're closing in on kickoff. We're 25 minutes away from uh, starting the match up at Pride Park and we've still got quite a lot to get through.
You can also watch uh, a little feature with Sam Cosgrove as well, getting to know the the big striker. That's exclusive to Argyle TV. There's a lot of great stuff on Argyle TV. If you haven't already subscribed, £4.50 a month. It doesn't cost you too much at all. Um, uh, and there's so much on there. You can watch full match highlights back. You can, you can watch longer highlights, features, exclusive interviews. Make sure you do uh, sign up and subscribe because it's your one-stop shop, really, for Argyle news. Now, let's head across to Pride Park, shall we, and, and have a chat with Dan Cole, who was up in position in the Midlands. Daniel, long old journey yesterday, but I'm looking at the pictures and can already see that away end pretty full. Yeah, I just listen. I can barely hear you, actually. It's so loud in here, <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's quite something. I think Pride Park holds around 30,000 supporters so when you see the trunk of that corner over there just across from me full, full up with green and white it's remarkable particularly remarkable given you know the challenges of travel and the, and the, the cost of fuel as well it's an incredible effort and every um, every derby county official that i spoke to today remarks upon the, the size of crowd that we're bringing and, and how impressive they are yeah, and I suppose, Dan, it, it kind of signals exactly what we, we want to, to, to kind of build at Home Park and have more sort of occasions like like this. That's why we are building towards being this, this championship club. I mean, Derby, I was speaking to Mark off air about it. You know, their setup is, is Premier League, but they are in this division. They are... Bit, there are they are a tough team, but they are they are beatable, and this will be a signal of intent from us, won't it? If we can get something from today. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, I think a massive opportunity. It's obviously a, a tough game, but as um, the manager said the week, this is what you want if, if we, to get to where we want to get to for the championship. You're playing these sorts of games in front of these sorts of crowds every week, and I don't think they'll be um, overawed by that. I don't think that they'll be overwhelmed. I think having the, the supporters in our corner is it, going to be a huge help. But yeah, absolutely a huge chance uh, to, to lay a marker, really. And, and I still feel a little bit as though when you when you talk to people and when you you read um, pundits' thoughts on, on, on League One. We're still somewhat of a, an afterthought, maybe, at the moment. And uh, an, an opportunity today to, to prove to everybody that we can compete with the best teams. It's not going to be easy. I mean, they are stacked with talent and in every area of the pitch. But um, nothing to be afraid of. Let's go and see what we can do. Just finally, you, you've obviously been in and around the squad for the last couple of days, staying in the hotel last night with them this morning. You mentioned they're not going to be overawed. How is the mood? How is everybody feeling? Very relaxed, um, very relaxed, very up for it. I think um, there's real good competition for places at the moment in the squad. The three changes we made today. The, the three lads who've gone out, uh, who consider themselves quite unfortunate. So I think all the players know when they do get selected in, in the starting 11, they need to be on their metal to uh, to get a result and so to keep their place. So um, I think everyone's up for it. I mean, when you think of the sorts of games that this team has been involved in the last couple of seasons, they weren't overwhelmed by Stamford Bridge, though they shouldn't be overwhelmed today. Top stuff, Dan. We'll let you get back to it. Thank you very much, sir. Twi Twitter by Dan Cole which is one of the best things in the world, will be available on the Argyle feed, of course, throughout this afternoon. So um, if you can't listen to the game on Argyle TV, watch it on Argyle TV. That's the best place to follow it. Uh, blog on our website, of course, on the live match feed, but also Dan's, uh, Dan's tweets, taking you through all of the action. And we'll um, have all post-match rea reaction as well for you on, on Argyle TV too, as well. And Dan was mentioning there the, the three changes that Argyle have made today. Let's along with Mark, have a look through the Argyle side selected for this afternoon's game again. Here it is on your screens. Those three changes. Randall coming back in for Houghton. Um, Whitaker in against his old team in for Finnezaz and Ryan Hardy recalled to that starting lineup as well with Niall Ennis dropping out. The, the other thing I suppose to, to remark on this, and uh, Mark Edworthy, is, is that the back three that has played the last few matches that has kept consecutive clean sheets against Forest Green and against Bolton with Nigel Lundvike and, and um, Brendan Galloway either side of, of Dan Scar has been kept and you've got someone with the experience of, of James Wilson still on the bench. That that says a lot, doesn't it, to especially Nigel Lundvike from Stephen Schumacher that he's got trust in him. Yeah, it certainly has and I think they realise it's going to be a tough away game and if you can keep personnel the same, it always helps the manager, the understanding of how they operate 
Um, obviously, you've got Michael Cooper back there who's in fantastic form and he's going to be tested this afternoon, no doubt. Um, wonderful goalkeeper behind a really strong back three. And the three changes, as you mentioned, is it Randall's 50th uh, league game, I think, uh, been here at Plymouth for uh, since the age of nine, coming through the academy ranks. And uh, I think last season, he was held back a little bit. We played with like one in midfield and now with that two in midfield, he bursts through and he looks to create opportunities and get into the opposition's box. And I think, um, yeah, delighted to see him start today. I think he deserves that starting place. Keep your comments coming in. Uh, plenty flooding in. You can find us on Twitter, at Argyle, or you can comment on the on the, the video below. We've got Richard who says, uh, cheering on Argyle from Sydney. All these people watching Argyle from hot places. 3-0 win, Whitaker hat-trick today. Do we see that happening, Mark? That would be very nice. And I think he'd be delighted to go back to Pride Park and score. As we said before, I think he'll get a good reception. A young lad there, come through the ranks. Did superbly well there and obviously sold for, for big money. Uh, didn't quite work out at Swansea at the moment or hasn't so far. Uh, so hopefully this loan period at Plymouth will help him get a bit more confidence, get some goals under his belt. We know all about him. He can create opportunities. He did really well here midweek against Bristol Rovers. And I think he'll want to go back there and really put on a performance. There's always a case when you go back as a former player, you hope you get a good reception. That doesn't always happen. But uh, I can reassure you that the uh, Pride Park fans um, like their former players. He done well. He's a young lad that come through the ranks. But he'll want to go there. And it'd be interesting to see if he does score there today, what sort of reaction they'll give him then. Yeah, that is very true, actually. They might not quite be so forgiving. Let's have a look at the Derby side then. Uh, Liam Rossini has also made three changes from the side. They got a late win over Peterborough a week ago. Plenty of changes from their midweek uh, Papa John's Trophy win over, over Grimsby. Um, experienced strikers, James Collins, David McGoldrick in there. We mentioned the 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 youngsters in midfield. But Mark, looking at the back as well, I mean, Cashin, he's, he's played every single game so far. The Derby, another youngster that's come through, yeah. been shepherded alongside um, Richard Stearman, obviously, but but he's another one to keep an eye on potentially, is he? He certainly is, yeah. Cashin, we should have mentioned him before. He's another one who's come through and, uh, you know, superb player as well. A real blend of experience with youth, as we talked about, the likes of... Um, yeah, I'm just looking at McGoldrick there up front, scored a number of goals, vast experience. James Collins, vast experience. So it's a real mixture there. Interesting to see what Liam Rossini has done. Uh, he's got plenty to call upon on the bench as well. Uh, it's an attacking formation and it'll be interesting to see how that works out this afternoon. Well, commentary is coming up very, very shortly. We will, of course, keep you up to date with everything else that is happening around the country in uh, Skybet League One. Here are the other fixtures for you. Uh, that are happening today. Um, Ipswich, obviously, on a great run. Panuche Kamara gone there. Will he feature today? We'll find out there at Accrington Stanley. Uh, Portsmouth, top of the table. That's a real mouth-watering game against Peterborough United, a bit like the Argyle Derby game. Two sides that are right up at the top of the table. And we've got a Yorkshire Derby at Hillsborough as well. The Sheffield Wednesday travelling to uh, at home sorry, to, to Barnsley. So, yeah, we'll keep you in touch with all of those throughout the afternoon. Mark, one final word from you just before we get our headsets on and get ready in game modes. Um, how do you see this game going? I think it's going to be a tough away game for Plymouth. I really do. I think Derby are very good at home at Pride Park uh, with that crowd behind them. But are Plymouth going to relish the opportunity of going away from home? We've seen how well they did in the FA Cup against Chelsea last year. And I'm talking about a big crowd there at Pride Park. They seem to relish the opportunity. They've lost two on the road so far. We talked about it before, Charlton and Fleetwood. Um, but Derby are unbeaten at home. So it's a real, real tough one to call. I just want an exciting game. And as I said, um, I'm sitting on the fence, which is terrible. But um, I really think that whoever's going to be worthy winners at the 90 minutes. But let's just hope that travelling away support are going to be entertained this afternoon because to think they've took two and a half thousand, I think, uh, from Plymouth is a long, long journey for them. So I hope they get all the rewards they do this afternoon because it is a long trip up there with great support. No, absolutely. Top stuff, Mark. Um, lots of people are up in Derby today, but a lot of people are watching from abroad. So, Tom, watching from Greece. Poorly timed holiday, but always... <laughs> Sat here in the gantry. It's beautiful weather. <laughs> I know. I just... you get Sydney, Tenerife, Greece. Amazing. We're not jealous at all. But, of course, we get to watch the football, which is, which is great. 
Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for that, Tom. Keep your comments coming in on, on Twitter at Argyle or on the YouTube video below. But we're very close to handing away, really, and um, starting our commentary. Remember that you, uh, if you're living outside the UK or you're outside the UK, UK at the moment, the match is available to stream on Argyle TV for just £10. Head across to our website, paofc.co.uk. Uh, look for the Argyle TV tab. Click on the streaming options there. You can find everything that is available for you. If you do live in the UK, I know you're not up in Derby and you're not lucky enough to be in Greece or somewhere like that, you can listen to the commentary again. £2.50, that is. Go to the same place on our website, the Argyle TV tab. All your streaming op options will be available for you there. Of course, if you are already a subscriber, that is involved. Um, anyway, Mark and I will we'll get our heads together, get ready for commentary and we'll see you on the other side because Argyle's trip to Derby is coming up next. Mm -hmm.